Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Worcester Arena. I'm here in the University of Worcester Arena looking after myself and Kieran Howard, my co commentator. Kieran, welcome to this broadcast. Thank you very much for having me. Hopefully, it'll be a good game. Uh, we are here on a Saturday night as the hometown Worcester Wolves welcome the Doncaster Eagles to this venue. Kieran, how are these two teams looking matching up? Well, you know, Doncaster have always got a you know, very good reputation. You know, even when I was playing back in the day, they were very, very strong, especially the men's side of things. They've added some very nice additions uh, to the, all of these strong sides that they had before Christmas. Um, obviously in Tintin with his, with his BBL experience. Um, and, you know, being around the school for years and years and years. And actually, a student of the University of Worcester at this moment in time in Badaiko. Um So yeah, they'll be a strong team regardless, but you know, NBL Division 2, it's tough from uh, you know top to bottom. And we already know the Worcester Wolves, you know, they've just got to come out and form, making sure, you know, and the guys back like Matai and, you know, Wilfred. And yeah, making sure everybody's on top of the game and should be a battle the whole way through. That's what I'm here for. That's what I was promised. So hopefully that's what we'll get. Yeah, and you talked about the two additions back in the team in Matai Bartiani and Wilfred Sante. Just how important are those two guys to Dean Blake's team? It, it, it's the one-two punch, you know what I mean? It, as, as a coach, it's nice to have a card who knows what they're doing and a big that knows what they're doing at the same time. I always say that the most, the most two important people on the team, and those two link up always, you know, in the play, but not only that. In terms of leadership on and off the floor, definitely outside, and, you know, definitely on the court as well. So, uh, yeah, absolutely imperative. Let's hope that they, uh, they start the game, uh, not just for themselves, but also they get the game running and, uh, yeah. Yeah, you talked about these two teams being sort of stalwarts in this NBL Division 2 North Division. Looking at Doncaster Eagles, how do you think they're going to approach this different matchup? Your, your guess is as good as mine. Listen, you know, they've got, they've got some young boys, uh, but they've also got a lot of experience as well. So um, I think most teams want to get out and run. I think they'll use the, the, the mismatches inside, you know, with Tintin. Um, you know, that'd be a nice matchup to see, depending on who marks them. I would think maybe Matai. Uh, so it'd be good to see, obviously, an older veteran, obviously, in the England side. But obviously, Matai Valtteri, you know, playing for Romania at this moment in time, um, has done for the last couple of years. Uh, so it's almost like the, the older versus the young. Not old, Tintin's not old, just don't, don't get me wrong, but the older generation. But hey, you know, skill never fades. Um, but we'll see what, see what that matchup looks like today. Very good. So as we approach 20 seconds for tip, let's have a quick look at the start of the both teams. Starting with the West Wolves, we've got the likes of Wilfred Sante, Matteo Bartiani, Aaron Davudi, Emmanuel Yeboah and Humberto Ferreira who's going to bring out that starting five. Look at the Doncaster Eagles, we have Adiki, Wiggins, Wright, Metcalf and Watts. Coach, Coach Kieran, these are two teams that have gone up against each other already this part of the season. Uh, obviously, Coach Simon Roberts, a good friend of the Worcester Wolves, with his daughter Grace playing for the Wolves women's team a couple of years ago. What do you think he's going to be doing differently to approach this matchup? Hey, listen, you know, he's been around the game as well. Uh, he's been here multiple times, either watching his daughter or actually coaching as well. Um, I think he'll just stick to his goals, you know, keep it simple. Um, you know, if you're trying to do anything out of the ordinary, you know, that can usually sometimes go against you. So he's cool, calm and collected, Simon, no doubt about it. Um, I doubt he'll get any technicals. He's, that's how cool he is. Um, but no, I think he'll stick to his guns. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I saw Coach Simon Roberts in Loughborough earlier in the week and he was very you know, excited for this matchup. The first time he's come back and actually coached in the University of Worcester Arena. And here's Emmanuel Yeboah. Have a good one, Manny. All right. That's always nice. Yeah. It's always nice when, they, <laughs> when they, they come and look at our commentators. It's always nice, isn't it? Yeah, for sure. A little bit of a respect there. I love that. As we approach it, Matteo Bartiani and Watts take over. And it falls in the way of Doncaster Eagles. Early three, trying to get off the bat, doesn't quite go. Manuel Yeboah brings it up, gets in the hands of Wolfred Sante. It'll be strong here if Wolves can, you know, start the, start the game with the score after the miss. 
De Vudi sides it up. Finds Santa on the out like eight seconds left on the shot clock. Santa drives. Gets the Brock sends it neath by Watts. As the Doncaster equals bring it the other way. Early hit ahead. Hit the corner, hit for three. Can't quite get it to go. Coach, this is a quite quick start to this early matchup. Oh, absolutely. Two quick threes, obviously, from the Doncaster. It's a lovely spin. Yeah, two quick threes from the Doncaster side. Um, you know, that, that might be a theme for the rest of the game. What's the try to get the basket, the basket twice? Good defense in the perimeter. Uh, you know, went inside. But hopefully, hopefully, somebody will score. <laughs> oh, here we go. And again, another three to try to Again, does not quite a good job. Aaron DeVrede brings up another rebound. As he brings it down, sizes up, hits it to the corner into Yaboa. Gets that screen. Drives middle, hits out to Sante. Sante can't quite get it under control. Coach, if you were Coach Dean Blake on the side of this moment in time, what are you trying to, what message are you trying to get across to your players? Relax. Absolutely relax, okay? We've gone to the basket. It hasn't worked in our favour, but they haven't scored either, so the score's still nil-nil. And, you know, just relax a little bit, maybe get through a little bit of a set so we know what look we're actually looking for. Yes, push the ball, but make it. Uh, right, Watts hits the short corner. Gets it to go, plus the foul, put it on Maltai Bartiani. That's his first of the day. He cut my sentence off. <laughs> Classic Tintin. As the first bucket drops, a little over a minute and a half into this first quarter. What's up the line? Oh, wow. And he gets it to go, sinks it nice and calmly. Forcing the Wolves to try and come down the end, get score. Nice passing. Uses the screen, sends Baltiani down low, hits him down low. Target to go, gets his rebound, puts it up, get it down, and the foul. Yeah, and literally just found the simple mismatch there. They switched on the screen, have a look inside for Mata. He couldn't get the first one, stayed with it with the hustle play, rebounds it, puts it in and gets the AM1. Really good work by Mata inside. Yeah, and Coach, he's been out for quite a long time with you know an ankle injury sustained while playing for Romania. Just how important is it to get him back in this side? Yeah, you know, it's huge, it's absolutely I think that's sort of what the, the guys have missed this season. You know, as well as you know his size and his absolute phenomenal touch inside with the left. Just his leadership, you're being on court. You just gotta have to be careful today not to get drawn into a, uh, you know, any foul trouble, which has happened previously. Only you know, getting him back on the court, it happens. Um, but no, he looks good and ready to go. A couple of early points for him, but Tintin just answered back. So, like I said, that matchup looks like it's going to be there today. So, always had to cut you off there, coach. With that, what's hitting another big three, getting all the Eagles' points. It's Alberto Ferreira answers down the other end. And it's thrown off the baseline from right. Puts the ball in Worcester's hands. <laughs> Baltiani. Down low. Goes to work. Gets underneath. Puts it up. That's five quick points for Matto Baltiani. Booty picks it up, looks ahead, finds Yuboa. Great job from Yuboa there just to force that foul, put that on Metcalf. And coach, just how good is that of a team just to get out and run? It's absolutely imperative. I think that's the change in, in most sports. I think nowadays most players not only have to be, you know, get the skill wise, but minimum, absolute minimum, have to be an athlete. Um, so get up and down the court. If your team can do that and do that very, very well, you'll always give yourself an opportunity to get some easy baskets but not only that tire out the defense as well they come down make some bad decisions and then you run on them again so yeah try to make basketball as simple as possible by running so balls in the hand of Doncaster Eagles after that turnover by Aaron Davoudi Metcalf looks for Watts tries to find inside can't get to go get out to the corner Metcalf, sizing up, hits the corner, low on the shot clock, six, five, drives down low, still gets it out, finds the ball somehow, hits down low, put it up, can't get it to go, 
Good defence there by Whistling of the 24 seconds, and that's what you want. Quick little score down the other end, and uh, getting a defensive uh, 24. Good defence. Coach, you're sensing almost a sort of style of confusion from the Doncaster Eagles there. Yeah, I, ju I just think the defence was really good from Worcester. I think they, they, they've obviously studied, uh, you know, the plays, um, and, and they, you know, they matched up pretty well there. They switched when they needed to. They hedged when they needed to. They went over when they needed to. Um, yeah, I just think they're really good defence. You know, made them question a lot of things, and that's what you want to do defensively. Make the offence question. Try to get the worst look possible, and uh, ultimately there they got a bad look and got a 24. So good. Yeah, that's a great play from Marion Davoudi, finding Alberto Ferreira down low for the easy two. Coach, Alberto Ferreira's had to step up quite a bit in the absence of Matai Baltiani. How do you think he's come into this game differently now that Baltiani's back? Well, absolutely. You know, I think he's, he's a physical, athletic player as well, but when you don't have the size, you know, I do believe in heart over height, but, you know... Realistically, it gets to the point where height is still important as well. Um, but no, with Matai coming back in, Ferrer has been able to relax and play his role, you know, the passing role, but you know, still be athletic. So, yeah, I think uh, I think he'll take to this game and also for the rest of the season in the role that he's so you know commonly used to here at the Wolves. Watts for three, can't get it to go. Your Barra brings it up. Ferreira down the other end, nice still up and under. Yeah, just keeping it simple. Get to the, get, get out on early. Get to the basket. Make Tintin put him in some difficult decisions. If he picks up one or two fouls from not having to mark Matai, but instead has to mark everybody else, you're doing a great job. Say that. Just the Doka. Those baseline finds the back door. Nice little two points and the foul. Yeah, lovely finish. That foul going on Yeboah, his first. And just like that makes it a two point game. Unconventional with the bank. One point is one point, right? Doesn't matter how it gets it. I didn't know banks were open on a Saturday night, Kieran. <laughs> Apparently so at this time. Great little drive by Wilfred Sante there. Gets down low, puts the walls up four. That's foul is called on Humberto Ferreira there. Not really sure what that was. Karen, can you see it from your position? Yeah, hands on, unfortunately. You know, the guy put his head down looking to go, and Ferreira, unfortunately, didn't move his feet in time. Put his hands on, and instant hands on, check and foul. So foul called Berwick, Sierra. First personal bargain, doesn't play. It's up to five personal fouls. Yeah, that's the official. Just saying to Ferreira there what he's called Bottom for. Five, well, you out Watts, short corner, can't get it to go. Picked up by Baltiani. Santa nice brings it up, find your bower. Hit down low, find Ferreira, two easy points. Coach, we've been seeing quite a lot of you know, forcing the switch on the defensive end on the Doncaster Eagles. Do you think there's something that the Worcester Wolves are going to keep looking to force? No, 100%. It, it, you know, uh -oh. a switch gives you an easy advantage sometimes, other times it doesn't. Just an answer back there every time. Yeah, <laughs> Stoning it right from me as Josh Metcalf makes the three from the corner. Bringing it back to a three point game in favour of the Wolves. Yeboa, sizing up, drives down low, finds Ferreira. And again, Roberto Ferreira just getting down low and making that easy bucket. Metcalf, sizing up Sante, forces the foul. Yeah, silly one that. Reached in, didn't get it. Referee probably given the benefit of the doubt. And then does the exact same thing and gets the call. <laughs> got to be a little bit smart on that, but hey, I think he's only got one, so... Sometimes as a coach, you got to live with that. That's Sante's first. Metcalf finds Watts at the three. Goes low, put it at the floor. Stop and pop. Two points. Easy down. Down Watts there. 
or David Watts, I should say. Apologies to any Doncaster Eagle players or fans watching. Matt O'Brien for two more up on the floor. Yeah, ball screen again. To the outside, big three. The left of As Podolski makes the three out on the corner. Coaches is one team that just aren't going away without a fight. No, absolutely. I think I think they've sort of figured out a little bit of a little bit of an action here that's going to work for them. A little ball screen with Tintin. Spare out on the other side of the floor, outside the three-point line. You either got to stop the drive, stop Tintin, or get out to the shooters. Exactly, as Yeboah misses that three, Metcalf brings back down. Just a bit of a miscommunication there between him and Watts. Substitution for Worcester, number nine, James Harrop. As we see James Harrop making his first introduction of the day, replacing Arian Davoudi. He replaces number 14. Gets the screen of Poltiani. Gets down low. Forces the foul down low. Great job from Umberto Ferreira there. Oh, apologies. Even Yeboah, that's a bit. It'd be good if I called the right player, wouldn't it, coach? <laughs> It'd be perfect. Just look at the hairstyles. That's how you can tell the difference. Substitution for Eagles. We have number 11. Oh, we'll make this round the court. Looks like substitution for. As we see, double subs coming in. Doncaster Eagles, Denzel Wiggins taking the seat. We have Luke Baldwin coming in. Likes of the Wolves and Berta Ferreira is taking the seat. Replaced by Tom Grayling. Boa makes them both, making it a four-point game in favour of the Wolves. 21-17, two minutes 16 left in this first quarter. Metcalf into over, finds Puzikowski. Gets it to go again. Coach, that's two of two straight away as he's joined in. Do you think Wolves are going to try and change that defence a little bit here? No, absolutely. I think they just have to you know, decide what they're going to do on this side ball screen with the three shooters. What are they going to do? Are they going to double it for Tintin? Are they going to you know, stop the guard? Are they going to spread out a little bit? Um, and hopefully, hopefully, once they figure that bit out, um, then they'll be able to have a little bit more control and composure on defence. As Wilfred Sante responds there with three of his own, forcing the ball in Doncaster's hands. Find Watts down low. Now matched up with Tom Grayling. Shake and bake puts it up, can't get it to go. Ball picked up by Emmanuel Yaboa. Grayling. It's cross court to Harrop. Find Sante. Gets a screen off Poltiani. Sante getting straight down the lane, putting it up off the board. Two more points. As it just seems a little lack of concentration there by Sante, picking up an easy foul. Yeah, just, just a silly one, you know, really great drive to the basket. Got really happy about himself, I think, there. Tried to make an extra bit of play, but unfortunately, to go for a foul. And I think now, yeah, I think That puts him on two, and we see the first introduction of Jacob Dearman. But Coach Dean Blake calls timeout. So, Coach, first nine minutes, how do you think this game is going to progress? No, I, ho hopefully in similar fashion. Hopefully, you know, Eagles will still have, you know, their runs. As long as the Wolves are able to stifle those at times, I think it's great. I think tactically, I think hopefully the guys might have seen it at home, but if not, 
and um, Dean's actually the old coach Dean Ryan has decided to put on um, both of the big men, okay? So he's put on Tom Grayland and then he's put on Matai Baltanu. And on the screen now he's got two big men marking it. So that means that when they switch it, so stop on the drive, that means now they'll always have a decent matchup, so it'll never be tinted against the guard potentially if they have to switch it. So quite an interesting tactic there by Dean. You know, hopefully it pays off. It did in the last bit, you know, it was great defense by Tom Grayland. Um, but hey, listen, as long as these guys are gonna hit shots, it'll always be a close game. Yeah, exactly, and as we come out of timeout, we see the first introduction of Jacob Dearman. Coach Dearman's been sort of the stalwart for this team with the likes of Sante being out. He's had to rely on him to be the point guard a little bit. How do you think he's going to come in and sort of try to jeer his team up a little bit? Hey, listen, he's a captain for the reason, okay? Sometimes captain doesn't mean you're going to go up there and score 25 points all the time, but it means that you do all the groundwork stuff right. I read something recently that said 95%, you know, in a basketball game is he's played off of the ball. Um, and only 5% with the ball and he does everything else off the ball 95% of the time really well. Um, so it's nice to have you know, him being able to step up in the first half of the season um, and even now you know, with Wilfred coming back in, you know, it's a different dynamic. As right makes the first. Gets them both to go, bring it down to a four point game, still favour the Wolves, 26-22, one minute left to go in this first quarter. Well, it gets down low, through a lot of contact, draws the foul, doesn't draw the foul, he draws the turnover. A little bit of a travel there, maybe one too many steps, coach. Yeah, I think a little bit of contact came early. It would have been nice, a bit of movement off the ball, could have had a nice little back door there, but um, hopefully it doesn't happen again for him. One thing about coaches is they never stop looking at the defence. As seen by Coach Kieran Howell there. Watts brings it up, sucks up. Sets it up, only gets the two, puts a foot on the line, can't get the full points. Makes it a two point game. Yaboa keeps his dribble, hits out to Howell. Can't get it to go. Gets the control of it. Deflection, keeps it in the hands of the Wolves. Yaboa finds Dim, picks up the three. Can't get it to go, picked up by Dim. Grayling can't get it in his hands. He come the other way. Right, sides up the defender. Get low on the clock, good to go, put it up, and gets it to go, and that brings to the end of the first quarter, Doncaster Eagles 27, Worcester Wolves 26, coach, give us a little insight into what's going on in this team right now. That last play was a little bit of a dagger in the heart, and all honesty, you know, you, the clock's on and down, probably one of the, the worst things you can probably get is a, is a three, Not, you know, an uncontested three, if that, um, hopefully, hopefully, even now, you know, going into the second quarter, they, they can, again, reconfigure what they, what they need to do on defence. Tintin's going to be Tintin, okay? That, it, it's natural. Um, he's played a long, long time. However, um, it doesn't give an excuse to then be lackluster for playing defence on anybody else. And um, so, yeah, hopefully they come back out, uh, the wall side, and uh, be able to do a little bit better on defence, similar to what we saw in the first half of the first quarter. If they can do that for the next, you know, the next, next quarter, then uh, they should give themselves a chunky little lead again yeah, and we've seen a lot of three-point shooting especially from this Doncaster team you know the likes of uh, Metcalf and Kozowski both hitting two how do you think coach Dean Blake's going to talk to his players now and try to approach that going into the second quarter hopefully he turns around and says hey they've hit one right okay so that means that the guys can shoot them so we can't just be like listed on our rotations we've got to get on get have a nice high, high hand sorry um, and then be able to rotate from there um, I'll be surprised if they get any open open looks if they do hopefully the Wolves can, can change that very 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 quickly yeah we've seen the quite a heavy full screen dive offense from both these teams do you think that's something that they're going to try to keep going into or do you think they're going to try and change up a little bit yeah, well, I think that they found something that works. And, you know, sometimes you don't want to change a thing that works. You know, kiss, keep it simple, stupid. At the end of the day, that's what they're doing, setting a ball screen. Tell everybody else, get out of the way. And when we drive or when we get in these spots, if we find you for a shot, just make sure you're there to help you down. Apart from that, they're sticking to the guns. 
I am, I'm getting successful myself. I don't survive the whole way. As we start the second quarter, ball's going to be in the hands of the Wish Wolves. Power up to him, Barry. Gets it in the dip. Ferreira up top, drives down low. Kicks it out, finds Harrop, puts up the three. Can't get it to go. Grayling picks up the offensive rebound. Kicks it out. Dearman drives, finds Ferreira down low. Finds Grayling. Coach, that's that sort of ball movement offense we were talking about earlier, but they've just been able to come out this half time, between the quarters, sorry, and just been able to get it to go. Yeah, that's absolutely lovely. Do you know what I mean? You get a shot, we stay in it, we get the rebound, we manage to, you know, get somebody close now to me fast, fake it, one pass, two pass into the big man and finish underneath the basket. And just like that, we see a similar sort of offense from the Doncaster Eagles. Unfortunately, not the same result for them. As the Wolves come down the floor with Dearman. Gets the screen off Grayling. Finds Grayling on the slip, gets down low. Picks it out, finds Yaboa. Yaboa three, can't get it to go. And there's Ferreira. Can't quite pick it up, unfortunately. Ball falls in the hands of Doncaster Eagles. Adeke brings it up, drives down low. They'll tip it out, fight for the ball, he brings it up again. Right, sizes up Yaboa. Finds Pazorski, still Jacob Dearman. Falls in the hands of Harrop, still has it. Finds Ferreira, gets down low to Grayling. Two points. Coach, we talked in the first quarter about this you know, forward movement, running offence. How do you think this is going to sort of change the aspect of the game a little bit? So, I mean, you know, good defence turns into hopefully good offence. Uh, almost a little bit of a, of a mismatch with the pass, but hey, sometimes you need a little bit of luck. They're getting out, they're making, you know, Doncaster not only run on offence, but now run on defence, uh, and that's the best way to be. As Watts gets it to go, a little friendly bounce off the rim. Ball comes up the floor with Graham. The ball. Full swing, Yaboa gets the screen off Ferreira. Yaboa drives down low, tries to spin, comes back, can't get it to go, gets the steal. Watts not quite expecting him, but can't pull up with it. His right brings it down the floor through the Eagles. It's back with right. Finds a day cake. Stuck in the corner, has to get rid of it, puts it up high. Yaboa is there. With the steal, get up, flight time! He played the game on Wednesday, that's all I'll say, okay? Played the game on Wednesday, trained Thursday, trains Friday. He's protecting himself, I love that, very cool. Protecting himself a little bit, always a bit of a flat tyre as Watts can't get it to go. Comes down the floor with Harrop. Gets down low, the Euro step puts it off the floor, can't get it to go. Another offensive rebound by Tom Grayling. Kicks it out, finds Yaboa. Sizes up, drives down low, gets through the contacts, forces the foul. It's a good thing, obviously, when you do run, like we've just seen a couple of the instances here, that you run together. And James have just gone on his own there. We wouldn't have been able to get an opportunity that led to the foul. Really good job by Tom Green and still running the floor. Managed to get it back, found Emmanuel and drew the foul. So, yeah, really good job running the floor together. As uh, you said, great job from Yabara there, forcing the first foul on his AG. Coach, how do you think the foul game might come into this, you know, going late down the stretch? Massive, um, you, know, it's not, it, you know, any team that gets in a little bit of foul trouble, you have to be really, really careful when you're doing after that. Um, it's not too bad of this moment in time, you know, it's split quite evenly across the both teams. The one I would say just for the Wolves have to be a little bit curious of is uh, Wilfred Sante, he's like so this moment in time. Exactly. And coach, we'll look at these two very different teams, you know. Doncaster Eagles, predominantly older, predominantly men in work, and Worcester Wolves, predominantly university students. You know, they would have played earlier in the week. We talked about it earlier, they played on Wednesday. Close loss to Loughborough University. How do you think that's going to change, you know, the sort of dynamics within these two teams? Well, I think, you know, with the weird man, you would think, obviously, they're a little bit older in age, but 
you know, they've got the experience definitely with some of the guys on the team. You know, with these guys, they, they are younger. Okay, so you've got to use what you know God has given you at this age, which is hopefully good knees and good ankles and a good pair of lungs. Get out and run. They've done exactly that so far. Um, Eagles haven't really got out on the fast break, which tells me they want to play a half court game. So maybe getting up and stifling them a little bit earlier as soon as you can reduces the time that you know when they get down the court, which reduces the time that they have to make uh, good decisions. And Yuboa makes the first. And he gets them both to go. That makes it a five point game. As he takes a sub and we reintroduce Aaron Davudi. Coach, you talked about Doncaster Eagles being a predominantly half court team. When you look at the stats and not getting very many fast break points, do you think that's something they might look to change moving forward? I mean, potentially, yeah, but you know. It, it, it's either in your game plan or it's in how you play or not. And um, I think this moment in time, with the ball trying to get up and down at the same time, um, it, it makes it a lot more difficult. If they do, I think it will put more pressure on the walls in terms of the defence. But they haven't looked to do that so far. If that changes, potentially we might see a change up in the score and in the flow of the game as well. Arrow. Using the screen for Ferreira. Kicks over to Diamond. Getting late in the shot clock, has to make something, gets the screen off Ferreira, gets the turnover, and that's a 24 second violation. Coach, you're sensing this maybe a little sense of, you know, miscommunication on that one. Yeah, miscommunication, a bit of complacency as well. I think, you know, James came off the screen and sort of was like, where's my options, where's my options? Sometimes you've got to create your own options. You know, Amanio Bo was great at that, so was Matai. I think that's the next step in his, his development. Um, but no, just taking it upon yourself to turn around and go, hey, maybe I have to make something happen. But there you go, great work by Ferreira. And it's actually going with Doncaster. I, don't know. I thought it came off of, uh, I thought it came off of Doncaster. But again, great work. Watts hits the step back, gets it to go. Coach, he's a man that's, you know, crying on me scorer for this team. Yeah, I, um, I think he's played a little bit before. <laughs> I don't know what gives you that impression. <laughs> Maybe every move he does, you know, something, something good happens potentially. Davoudi finds yeah. Bartiani late in the shot clock, gets up high. And it's called for the offensive foul. Ref saying he's hooked his arm a little bit there. And unfortunately for Bastiani, that's another Wolves player on two fouls. <laughs> a very important one, I thought. Outside. Zorski can't get it to go, brings that by Harrop. Finds Davoudi, finds Ferreira down low. Fast movement play, ends and Mata Baltiani too. Puts Wolves up by four, 36 32, five minutes left to go in this second quarter. As Watts can't find Nata. Dearman calls for the screen from Baltiani. Turns the corner, gets down low, finds a floater. Friendly little bounce, and that's another two points in the coach of the Worcester Wolves. Metcalf up top, finds Nasser, finds Watts in the corner. Target to go. Coach, seems like it might be a little bit of a lid on the rim for the Doncaster Eagles in a minute. At this moment in time, yeah, I think the defence that Wolves have come out with has sort of stifled them a little bit. They're a bit like, this is this is awkward. In all honesty, from where I'm sitting, I can't really see what they're running either. It's confusing me as well. Uh, but no, it stifled them a little bit. No doubt Simon will come out with it, you know, even with the substitute potentially to talk to the guys. Um, I think they need to get. I think they need to get to the basket. It's as simple as that. You know, if you've got two people on you, yeah, that means somebody's open. But if I can split those two, then I can get to the basket myself. I can find cutters and I can find shooters. And that last couple of times, they're just passing around the three.
coach Dean Blake just talking it over with the other four members of his Worcester Wolves team. As Davoudi makes it first. Get some both to go. Worcester Wolves lead eight points. 4.24 left to go. Right, put it up, down the floor. And that's a quick three points okay. to answer, coach. Okay. Yeah, that's absolutely something that you do not want to happen. Yeah, you've just taken a really good opportunity to get to the line. You don't pick up on defense, a little bit of lack of communication. One pass open three. Yeah. That's a tough one to spill, a, a tough pill to swallow as a coach. Find your way through. Verdi fights his way through. Gets tipped, stays in the way of Worcester Wolves. Yeah, strong defense there on the drive. Got his body in the way each time, managed to get the hand on the ball, really good defense. Dylan really to, to inbound, eight seconds on the shot clock. Fran Torreira goes to work, gets low, puts it up. Up and under. And Berta Barrera seems to get a score out of nowhere. Yeah, a bit of a circus move. Got it to go though. Nice sir. Put it up. Spin move. Gets inside. Puts it up. Floats in the air. Can't get it to go. Ball lands in the hands of Dearman. Thanks for our refined Fatianu. And just like that, coach, it's a nine point game. Yeah, I mean, the, the game plan seems fairly straightforward. When we get the opportunity to run, we run. Um, and Doncaster seems similar. We can get the ball to Tintin. Let's do that. And just like this, another fast break. Now the steal, puts out the That's hands. a great pass. That's a great pass, as, as Jacob did, would probably tell you. He even gave himself a clap yeah. on the way back there. He, he wanted Harrop to get the offensive rebound as well. Put more stats up as Watt can't find him to go. In the hands of Dearman once again. Use the screen, finds Baltiano. It's out. Harrop yeah, gets down low, gets, gets inside. As we got to that side, Bartianu is there again to force the clean up and time out to oh, cast the Eagles. Coach, do you think this little run by the Whistle Wolves is sort of struggling for the Eagles a little bit? No, absolutely. I think, you know, when you're getting scored on, on a fast break the other side, it makes you want to go down to the side and maybe get something quick and early. You do want to get the ball up quick. That's not what I'm saying. You do want to get up as quick as you can. However, you need to be controlled because you need a score. It's as similar as that, you need a score. Um, and then, you know, the theme there was walls of play defense. It was a, you know, a missed shot or a four shot selection or a turnover. Run the other way, instantly with the layup. They come back down, same thing. Go back down the other end, score. Go again and again and again. I think there was just a little bit of composure, especially when one team's got about six or eight points in a row. You have to come down and you have to execute, whether that means getting to the foul line, getting an easy two or getting an open three. Yeah, you talk about that execution now. I mean, we've just seen a series of six quick points. You know, they put Stong, uh, Worcester Wolves, sorry, up by 13. 48, 25 left to go in this uh, second quarter. Coach, how do you think the timeout game's going to come into effect here? I mean, you know, Coach Simon Roberts, he's just used his last time out of this quarter. Coach Dean Blake's still got one left. Do you think that's going to factor in a little bit? Absolutely. I mean, you know, Coach Roberts had to call it to simple as that. You know, you've got six or eight points scored and you want to roll. Bang, a timeout has to come out. You know, you've got to talk to your guys, recom you know, get them more composed again, um, and then turn them back out there. And hopefully they don't make the same, you know, mistakes or errors that potential that they did. Um, on the other side, you know, having won just before half time is quite nice. Maybe he draws something up in the last 20 seconds to go, who knows? Or he might bang it if he's not happy with how his guys come out now. As we're back on the way, Nicer brings it up, puts it to Watts. Size up Baltiani. Gets the screen, rejects it, gets double teamed. As the foul is called a Matai Baltiani, that's his third coach. Yeah, I did just. Uh, you know, it's a difficult one. You put the, the referees in a decision. You put the referees in a position, sorry, to call something or to make a decision. They did the job. He's right on the sideline. You've got two guys there. We don't need to put the hands in. Um, and unfortunately, he's done that, and that ends him his third. What? What? Sizes up Grayling. Goes up and under, gets the foul, and one! That's a good foul pull there against Tom Grayling. Foul's called in the head, and coach Dean Blake takes a timeout. Coach, you've seen the likes of Worcester Wolves players getting in foul trouble quite early. Matabayani 
hitting three early in this second quarter. Do you think we're going to see him much for the rest of this game? I hope so. I hope so. Left on the wall side. I hope he can play a little bit more discipline. Um, and that he's going to be here for the rest of the game. Even with a little one there, you know. Tintin. Yeah, he knows he's done his job now. He's on three. Perfect. Give me somebody else then. Tom Martin. Little, 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 um, little bit of a move with a bit of history on it for sure. And unfortunately, you know, he's gone, he's gone to the line for, for an hour. Or a potential and one. Potential and one. We can't present the future. These days, coach, you know that better than anybody. We can't do, but probably Mr. Mac, and I'm pretty confident he's going to score this. As we come out this time out, coach, I think it's a good time to get a quick update on your women's team at the minute. Obviously, unfortunately, not playing today with Sheffield Elite taking the forfeit. How is your season going on days like this? I mean, it's going well. You know, there's not a lot of time that you get time on a weekend to, you know, to yourselves. But no, it's going great. You know, we had a couple of injuries before Christmas and managed to finish five and two, which is great. And we were looking to go six and one, but, you know, injuries happen and, you know, things happen in life. But we've come back after Christmas. We've got, you know, we're doing well with the injury side of things now. Um, and we've been able uh, to win the last couple of games. We played last week at Sheffield Hatters, very tough team. Um, but no, hopefully we go on a little bit of a run and hopefully the next time we see Sheffield Tatters will potentially be in the final and that's what we're looking for, that's the aim and that's the goal. As Watts gets his shot to go, Worcester Wolves 48, Doncaster Eagles 32, 2 minutes 20 left to go in this second quarter. As we have a foul called, couldn't quite see what number the referee's putting up. There goes number 13, Doncaster Eagles. That's Josh Metcalf. That's his second. Sante finds Grayling. Kicks it out, finds Ferreira. Two quick steals, two quick points. Metcalf kicks it to Watts, hits that corner, hits the two, can't get it to go. Bring ball comes down in the hands of Tom Grayling. Good idea, Baron De really there. Just unfortunately couldn't quite get it to go. Yeah, put a little bit of put a little bit of pizzazz on it there. Just came off of the foot of the defender. No doubt that would have been a 360 dunk for sure. Oops. Davudi sides it up right, gets that low, can't get it to go, picked off by Grayling, and that's two points again. Right, brings it down, sizes up, kicks out to Nessa, gets down low, gets up high, two points in response. Coach, he's a player that the Worcester Wolves know very well, obviously still at university, with a lot of these players, do you think they're going to change how they defend against him? So they'll see each other at training all the time, and um, they did obviously did before Christmas. I know that they'll still be he's still being trained. So, um, I think it'll be quite nice. Ooh. I think it'll be quite nice that they get to go against each other a little bit. It's always quite nice when you go against your friends. Um, but no doubt it'll be you know singing and uh, happy happy stuff at the end of the game, regardless. As Watts gets it to go from high once again off the miss of Wilfred Sante. He brings the ball up, 42 seconds left. Doncaster Eagles down by 11. Worcester Wolves 52, 43. We see Rene up top. Shakes and bakes, trying to get on the move. Jump stops, hits Davudi. Gets down low, late in the shot clock. Finds Ferreira. Can't get it to go. Picked off by Grayling. As it looked like it was going to be a foul or a block even by Watts, but unfortunately he's called for the foul there by the referee. Puts Dom Grayling to the line for two. I think the first one looked like a little bit more to me. I don't think the second one was too bad, but maybe a little bit of a makeup call and yeah. First one for Watts though. Interesting. It's a late whistle, but it's a whistle not enough. It puts Tom Green to the line. Can't get the first to go. Makes the second, makes it a 10-point game, one possession shot clock. 
Ball way. comes up the Eagles. Right, slows it down. Ten on the shot clock, moves it, use the screen. Still in the hands of Wright, keeps it going. Sides up Ferreira, gets down low, gets the foul. Can't get the extra points. Foul's called on Ferreira, that's his second. Yeah, he did everything right there, just literally in the last second. He stopped moving his feet a little bit, um, tried to move in at the same time and uh, got the bump. Definitely a block and foul. Um, sends to the line, yeah, to the right, sorry, to the left. As he makes it to go, a little confusion by the rest of the players there. Not really recognising he's got a shoot two, not one. Almost giving him an extra point. As he makes a second, 4.5 on the shot clock. Gets it in, ball to Sante. Finds the booty, puts it up. Can't get it to go, picked up by Reddy. Can't get it in. Coach, it's been an action packed first half. Just how do you think? Give us a summary of that first half of action. No, I, you know, I think it's sort of what we were expecting. Um, run, running more so from the Worcester guys, executing in the, in the full court, uh, doing, you know, changing things up on defence. And then from obviously from the Eagles side of things, they're slowing it down a little bit, trying to find the mismatches, trying to find um, the, the early or the early advantages, um, or the late advantages regardless. But no, been good back and forth action, you know, players stepping up from both sides. Tin Tin obviously being one on the other side, um, and obviously Matai, when he is an influence fast, yeah, we talked about three fouls there with Matai Bartiani. Do you think that's going to come into a factor later on in this game? I hope not. I hope not. I hope uh, the, you know the discipline comes in a little bit, and he, did, you know, he realizes, well, I can't get a bit, a bit, you know, a bit as physical as I was before, and you know, start to make a little bit, you know, clever decisions. But I, what I would say is, is you know, with his absence, I think in terms of the scoring load, Ferrer's done exceptionally well. You know, he, he's he's doing the simple things right, moving off the ball, cutting, finishing when he gets the opportunity inside. I wouldn't be surprised if he's, you know above 15 points at this moment in time. So if he can continue to do that and the other guys do well on defence and execute on offence, um, I think the Wolves will be with a good chance to finish the game um, with, the, with the win. That's all very good. And what will we be without a game without our sponsors? So thank you to University of Worcester, Universal Display, Aspen Coaches, Spirit Executives, Something Party, Spirit Events, Synergy Sports, ASM Access, Alison Reese, Planning Consultancy, who are today's match sponsor, and Wyvern. We also like to thank league partners, Wilson, Sure Shot and Dynamic. Make sure you stay up to date with all the latest news and developments on the Worcester Wolves teams by following them on social media networks, Facebook, Instagram, the newly renowned X, YouTube and LinkedIn. Make sure you press all the bells and whistles, keep up to date, bells, whatever they're called these days, I'm not quite sure. Make sure you subscribe to the Worcester Wolves YouTube channel and turn on notifications so you never miss a game, interview, highlight or a feature of the season. We always like to keep you up to date as much as possible. Don't forget, visit the Worcester Wolves online store to get all your Worcester Wolves merchandise. We have something for everybody, whether it's your old University of Worcester, you know, Valencia tracksuits, or you want a uh, replica jersey, it's all there. If you want an old Christmas bauble, I'm pretty sure they've still got a few of them hanging around. Make sure you visit us in, in person at the University of Worcester Arena or online at worcesterwolves.org, and all your items are available to, dry, to buy directly from the University of Worcester store. Teachers and coaches, you want to join our watch and play scheme is back for this season. You can bring your class down, watch live basketball here at the arena. For every 10 child tickets purchased, you will receive a complimentary adult ticket in return. We will visit your schools, club, and give you a one-hour coaching session with our coaches and players. Make sure you email worcesterwolves.ac.uk to book a game and for more information. Does your child want to get involved in basketball? Our community programme, run by my co-commentator, Worcester Wolves, Kieran Howell, is back for children aged 5 to 16. The Friday Fundamentals, Millie Ballers and Saturday Club are back with places for just £5 per session when booked in advance or £7 on the day. Visit the community pages on our website for full details and to book. All abilities are welcome. We have half-term camps coming up this February. We have a Millie Ballers camp on February the 12th from 9 to 11. Coach, you've been running that one as well? Absolutely. Anything I can get my hands on doing a bit of coaching, I'm absolutely there. Perfect. That is for 5 to 11 year olds aged just £10. A two day camp on Friday the 13th and 14th. Coach, that's your birthday, is it not? 
It is indeed. I'm a Valentine's baby. Valentine's he's, a val baby. he's a Valentine's baby. That's for <laughs> coaches. Ele players 11 to 16 years old, which runs from 10 till 3 each day for £30 to attend both days at 55 quid. Full details on how to book can be found on the camp pages of our website. Our couch to court sessions are back. Another one coached by Coach Kieran Howell to my side. It's a fun basketball session for adults to help you improve fitness, meet new people, get on court and enjoy playing the game of basketball that we all love. Again, all abilities are welcome. The sessions are run on Mondays from 8 to 9 at the cost of £5 per session when booked in advance. Sessions take place at the court on the Riverside building next to the arena of University of Worcester Arena on the Riverside campus. That's right down here next to the arena. Next home games, the Worcester Wolves are back in action. The women on Friday night, that's this Friday coming, as they tip off at 7.30 against the Derby Trailblazers. Make sure you visit the box office online, everywhere in the store to get your tickets to that game. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with third quarter action.
Welcome back to this WF NBL Division 2 matchup between the Worcester Wolves and the Doncaster Eagles. Worcester Wolves go to the half, winning 53-45. But I'm sure Coach Simon Roberts and the Doncaster Eagles have got a bit of a matchup coming for them. I'm once again joined by Coach Kieran Howell, coach of the Worcester Wolves women here at the University of Worcester Arena. Coach, give us a little insight to how the first quarter went. Yeah, no. It, it, you know, it, it's sort of how we were talking about it before. You have to apologise, excuse me. A little bit of a crap there. Um, you know, sort of something that we were expecting. You know, most of the ones are getting out of transition. Um, Eagles want to slow it down. I think, it, you know, it's the tale of two evils. Um, if the most of the ones slowing it down, I think the Eagles will be able to take it over an advantage. They've got to make sure that they keep pushing the pace. Or vice versa to that. Doncaster need to make sure that they're finding um, the mismatches when they can. Um, and I'm not just looking for the first shot every time, moving the ball, but maybe the Wolves play defence, because then it can lead to potentially, you know, open twos, open threes, and fouls to get, you know, get to the foul line. As we return to this, we have leading point scores for both teams. David Watts leads Doncaster Eagles with 21 points. As Humberto Ferreira brings up the Worcester Wolves with 14. Coach, we talked a lot about David Watts in that first half. Just how do you think he's going to come out of this with his team down to eight right now? Yeah, I think, I think the, break, the break either does a good thing or a bad thing to players. You know, it, can, it can make them reset themselves and you know, set new goals for the second half. Or it can make them relax a little bit too. You know, you know, maybe think they're a little bit above that. You know, I've got no doubt to watch coming out of the game. You know, come back in, ready to go, ready to play. Um, and let's be honest, he is the key matchup. If, if the Wolves are able to, you know, subdue him a little bit, um, they'll, they'll have success. As we get back underway, Kieran Wright brings the ball up for Doncaster Eagles. Finds Metcalf, kicks it to Watts. Watts. Guarded closely by Ferreira. It's over, finds it. Ball swings around, finds Watts at the top. Can't get it to go. Foul called. And it's called a Matai Baltianu. That's his fourth foul of the game. So four. I think, that, I think that's a little bit soft in all honesty. You know, 20 seconds gone. I, I don't think there's enough on that, but at the end of the day, it's been called. It's a, it's, it's a new spanner in the works for, for coach as well as that team. Let's see how the answer. As he takes a seat, Tom Grayling rejoins the action. Ball into the Eagles. Find Metcalf. He takes a deep three. Can't get it to go. Comes back in the hands of Yeboah. Going downhill. Gets stopped in his way. Resets. Comes out. Uses the horns action. 
Finding Sante. Finds Davudi. Takes a three. Can't get it to go. Yaboa brings it up, kicks it out to Grayling. Finds Ferreira, gets down low. Elevates two points on the board. Right, finds Watts. Gets down low, gets the point, gets the foul. And that's what Tim Tim Watts is all about. That grit to get the basket for two and cause a foul goes to line for one. Yeah, I think Coach Dean just saying to Tom Gray on the hey listen, you came over to help and then you and then you went away. We, we, if, you, if you're in help, you need to be there, you need to stay there, and you need to be available to help. As Watts gets his free throw to go. Sante in control for the Wolves. Find your bower. Takes the three. Gets it to go. Emmanuel Yaboa from behind the arc. That puts the Wolves back up by 10. Balls in the hands of right. Dribble drives, gets down low. Dog actually just building here, taking their time. Metcalf, sizes up, gets down low, gets the through. And Couldn't get a go through, contact. Ball's back in the hands of Wilfred Sante. Finds the voodoo, ball moving quick for the Wolves. Gets down low, little jelly layup. Can't get it to go, picked off by Grayling. That's two more points. And another offensive rebound from Tom Grayling, coach. Real big yeah, he's, he's, he's been really, he surprised me a lot on the offensive glass today. Oh, Great defense oh, by Yaboa. Yeah, he surprised me. He's following everything. And I think, like we said previously, if you are going to run, you have to run together. You can't just leave the most athletic guy on your team to do it, or the one that wants to do it. We all have to do it. And Tom's cleaning up on the offensive glass and getting extra points as a reward. Yeah, with the likes of Matteo Bartianu sitting down with four fouls, you think Coach Dean Blake's going to have to rely on him quite a bit more here? No, absolutely. And I think Tom's up for the challenge. Watts couldn't get it to go. Ball's in the hand of Sante. Gets down low, finds Grayling. In a movement, draws the foul. That foul's on 10. It's in Samuel Wiggins. Substitution for Eagles with number four. As he takes a seat, Brzezowski comes back in. Grayling can't make the first. Just a practice shot, that's all. That's why they give you two, isn't it? You get one practice and then one reel. You can't get them both to go, but the ball comes back with Davudi. Yaboa. Yaboa on the outside. Comes up, finds Ferreira, down low. Coach, we've seen that quite a lot throughout this game with Ferreira getting low and just moving around. Do you think that's going to be something that Don Castro is going to have to try and adapt to? I think they should have adapted it in the first quarter. Um, you know, he's moving off the ball exceptionally well. Um, he backdoor cuts, but not only does it when he does it, he does it with venom. Like, he, you know, he wants the ball, he wants to score. And as a result, he's getting really easy looks. And as we do, here come the Wolves. Back inside to Ferreira. Like say, we find Ferreira. Kicks it out to Sante. Gets the screen off Ferreira. Finds Jabura in the corner. Picks it up. Gets it to go. That's two quick threes from Emmanuel Yaboa. Putting that pressure on the Doncaster Eagles. Worcester Wolves 65, Doncaster Eagles 48. As Kieran Wright can't answer, but he forces that foul on Wilfred Sante. That's his third. Foul. Yeah, again, you know, that's a tough one. A little bit silly potentially from the player, but no, it's a tough one. But a 40 now, you know, it's sending. Um, where's the name? I'm trying to find the name. I'm sending right, sorry, to the line for three. And if they go like they just went with the first one, I think it'll be three points. Second. 
as Wright makes all three, brings a score. Worcester Wolves 65, Doncaster Eagles 51, with six minutes left to go in this third quarter. Balls in the hands of Uboa, steps back, hits the three, can't quite get it to go. Ball comes down with David Watts. Right, sizes up Sante. Finds the quick cut, Pazorski, can't get it to go. Aaron Davoudi bringing up the rebound. All the way down the lane, two points once again. Worcester Wolves getting down low, getting out on the fast break and getting those quick points, coach. You know, absolutely, and I think Aaron really pushed out there, beat the first line, beat the second line. There was only one line of defence, and I don't think Watts wants, wants to get into any silly trouble foul, so he just had to let it go. Speaking of Watts, he's picked that one, got that one picked off by Sante. He gets down low, finds Yeboa. Goes through contact, finds Tavudi in the corner for the three. Can't get it to go. Picked off again by Yeboa. Who unfortunately turns it over off the hands of Adoke. He keeps going and all the way. Coach looks like he's just using the Worcester Wolves' strength and making it their weakness. Tavudi taking control for the Wolves. Gets down low. Forces the foul. That one's on Kieran Wright. Surprisingly, only his first coach. He's done very well to stay out of foul trouble for sure. Could be two things though. Could be he's played really good defence or he's played no defence. We'll go with he's played good defence. We'll go with he's played good defence, coach. As Doncaster Eagles take the time out. Once again, we're going to see the introduction of Jacob Dearman, but we've got a timeout again. So, uh, what better reason than to thank our match sponsors for today, Alison Reeves Paddy Consultancy. And in Reeves Paddy Consultancy have been limited for over 30 years' experience in all aspects of planning and can offer a range of services to assist you through the planning process. They are fully chartered members of the Royal Town Planning Institute. And since they started consultancy in 2017, they have helped their clients deliver a wide variety of developments. As planning consultancy, they can offer many of the following services. Feasibility appraisals and of development potential, preparation and submission of times of planning applications, new residential and commercial developments, conversion of buildings, leisure, tourism development, and household extensions or alterations. Preparation and submission of planning appeals, including written representations, informal hearings, and public inquiries. Start to finish management and planning process, the preparation and submission of free application inquiries, as well as the discharge of condition applications. Visit their website at alisonreeves.co.uk for more information and to get in touch. We thank you, Alison Reeves, for sponsoring this evening's game, and hopefully you are getting your money's worth today. We rejoin the action with Davudi at the line. As he makes that first one. I'd like to take this time to say hi to the camp of Davudi, who we know are always watching on. Mama Davudi especially, we give you a little warm welcome as he makes both. Eagles. Right, in the corner. Through the legs of your bower, finds Watts, gets it to go. And the foul. Yeah, just a little bit late on the rotations, I think, there. It's late on the rotations, but can we talk about that pass from right, coach? You went through the legs of your bower. Some people have got it. Some people have got that ability. Some people have got it, and it seems he does as right makes the free throw. Gets the extra point for his team. Worcester Wolves 69, Doncaster Eagles 56. Five minutes to go in this third quarter action of NBL Division 2 play. Yeboa can't get it to go. Picked up by Watts. Finds Metcalf. Once again, screened by Watts. Keeps it out. Finds Pazorski. Pazorski can't get it to go. Ball picked off by Ferreira. Dearman brings it up, finds Yeboah, couldn't quite get it through to Grayling, getting that turnover as it's picked off by Pazorski. Metcalf up top, hits Pazorski, 
drives baseline. Kicks it out again, coach. A little bit of miscommunication there. Yeah, no, I mean, got the guy up in the air, drove baseline. Um, it was a good covering there by Tom, to be fair. Uh, and yeah, fortunately, threw it out of bounds. I think he was looking for the LeBron cut. He's looking from that wing. Give me a nice little cut. And I can finish in the basket. As Yuboa takes a seat, we reintroduce James Harrop. There's Harrop now, finds Ferreira. Gets down low, dribbles all the way through. Two quick, easy points down low again for Ferreira, coach. Yeah, I mean, he's absolutely, he's having the game of his life today, um, both offensively and defensively. He's had to check in for Matai, obviously, with the minis injuries, and he's doing a fantastic job. He's got this ability to chase out, look, never stops moving, to finish inside. A little bit of frustrations on his face there because he's like, hey, I'm moving around. You guys have got to do the same thing. As Tom Grayling answers with a stop and pop. Brings the score 73, Worcester Wolves 58, Doncaster Eagles. Metcalf finds Watts. Watts. Swings through, puts it up. Can't get it to go. Ball comes down with Harrop, finds Davoudi. Makes the contact. Forces the offensive foul. Arian Davoudi picking up that foul there. You know, the Wolves did everything perfect there, you know. They got the rebound, they pushed it out early. They got the numerical advantage, so that's the number advantage. But just didn't, didn't utilise it. And unfortunately, now it's an offensive foul. It's, it's back possession with Doncaster. I mean, it could have been two points. And Coach Dean Blake is just letting them know about that. Yeah, it's unfortunate for Aaron Davoudi, isn't it, Coach? I mean, he's had a great game up till now. No, yeah, he's, he's doing really well. It's again, you know, when it gets a little bit more, you, when you get tired, you do start to make, you know, some silly decisions. Um, and that's natural, you know, that happens for everyone. Um, but no doubt, he'll, he'll be introduced into the game definitely in the fourth. As Kieran Wright banks it in for two. Jacob Dearman looks to answer. Can't get it to go. Picked up by Ferreira. Kicked out. Dearman continues his run. Can't get it to go again. Tipped out. Tom Grayling in the hands of Finn Rene. Can't get it to go again. Try, try, try again. Slowed down by Kieran Wright here for the Doncaster Eagles. Sizes up. Kicks it out. Finds Metcalf. Metcalf drives. Finds Pazorski. Puts it on the floor. Puts it up. Can't get it to go. Picked up by David Watts. Puts it up and the foul. And that's not who you want the ball to go to right underneath the basket. Watts. Yeah, good, good, um, good awareness there from um, from Watts to stay on the play. I think he, he might have seen that the shot might have, the shot might have been going a little bit short. Um, managed to stay with it, grabbed the rebound, went up, got the two, but also got the call for himself as well. So really good work there by Watts. That puts Tom Grayling on three fouls. He'll take a seat. And we welcome back Emmanuel Yaboa as David Watts gets the free throw to go, gets the extra point. Dearman brings it up for the Wolves. Finds Rene. Can't get it to go. Picked up by Watts. In the hands of Wright. To Metcalf. Picks it back to Watts. Puts it on the floor. Shake and bake. Gano gets it to go. David Watts having the game of his life. That's his fourth three now, coach. Yeah, I mean, it, then, you know, that, that, that's just an elite move. Yeah, a little quick jab. One dribble pull up from three. That's not easy. Although he made it look easy, it really isn't. Ferreira down low, forces the foul. That's going against David Watts. That's his second. Yeah, clever move by there, Ferreira. Drew the two. Watts didn't really commit, he just stood there, so hey, I'm going to wrap your arm up with mine and I'm going to get the call because, hey, I've got hold of the basketball. As we see James Turner introduced for the first time today. James, really good shooter, been at the university for a long time now, let's see if he can, uh, can show that when he jumps in. Dearman, couldn't get it to go. Officials just want a quick conversation with Kieran right there. Probably just said how great his beard is. It is a great beard, isn't it, coach? Yeah, I mean, look at Doncaster. have got some great beards today. Watt, Wright, Metcalf. I say that without one. It's called jealousy, okay? 
think I might join you on that jealousy train there, coach. There's Metcalf. Finds Pazorski down low. Blocked by James Harrop. Picked up by Yaboa. Yaboa comes down. Finds Dearman for the three. Can't get it to go. It's okay. In charge for Doncaster. Sizes up. Puts it up over Harrop. Gets it to go. Even with the hand in his face, he can still put it up. That's a quick little bringing points up for Doncaster Eagles. As the Worcester Wolves lead by four, 73-69. 45 seconds left to go in this third quarter. Balls of Yaboa. Over to Dearman. Gets the screen off Ferreira. Seven seconds on the shot clock. Trying to find something to do with it. Puts it up, gets it low, gets down low, puts it up. Off the bank, puts it up. 75-69 in the favour of the Wolves. DK finds right. Sizes up, Harrop gets the screen. Sizes not to use it, goes down low, hurts himself. And the foul is called. Foul called. Can't see Don't who that was on. James Harrop, there we go, for the confirmation there. Coach Dean, not happy with that one. It's like, hey guys, we did everything right, and then we give up a silly foul. And that's where, as a coach, you know, you, you want you guys to be just a little bit more disciplined. Not saying that they're running around, you know, like headless chickens. That's not what they're doing. However, you know, when it, when it comes to crunch time and the game's close like it is, you know, we, we've just got to keep our head and, you know, do the same stuff that we've done. That's what's got us in the lead so far. As Kieran Wright stays perfect from the line, eight from eight. Force the point. Jacob Dearman brings it up. Six seconds on the shot clock. Finds Turner. Struggles. Puts it out. Finds Jaboa. Has to put something up. Does gets it to go and it counts. Great recognition from your the bowler there. Oh, absolutely. Two, three seconds left to go past the wall and still have a good to finish. The bank is definitely open on a Saturday this time, apparently. And um, yeah, really good job by your bowler. That brings up the end of the third quarter. Worcester Wolves lead 77, Doncaster Eagles 71. Don't go anywhere. This is going to be a highly contested game as we welcome back the fourth quarter coach looking at the sort of stats and everything surrounding it obviously the likes of Kieran Wright going 100% from free throw how do you think that's going to affect things going down the stretch yeah hey listen you know free throws are uh, some of the most important shots in the game okay as simple as this you know hit threes and two just that was great but you know sometimes especially when it's close it does come down to the free throw um, and with Wright in with 100% at this moment in time continuing that's great um, but you really want to make sure that he He's doing it and his teammates are doing it. If it does go down to a close game, free throws match a lot. So he's definitely doing his part. Like we said, going 100% from the free throw. Also likes going 100%. David Watts going 5 for 5. He's had 33 points today, coach. How important has he been to this Doncaster Eagle size? Well, put a bit straight, he wasn't there before Christmas. Now he is. And he's already got 33 points. Um, you know, his name anyway, you know, where he's played, it's always going to be. He's always going to want to show up and show out. He doesn't do anything, you know, half paced. Uh, and, you know, 33 points. It's as simple as that. You know, whoever scores the most wins, yes, that comes to the defense. Um, but at this moment in time, he's uh, he's definitely carrying it. So. Yeah, and the other side, Worcester Wolves, led by Umberto Ferreira, 20 points. How do you think it's going to be important for other players and teams to try and step up now? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's Ferreira keeps doing what he can do. Hopefully, there'll be some buckets coming from the stairs. But again, just make, just make it as good as he needs to stand. You run them when you can. Don't give them opportunities so much. Don't give them opportunities so much down to the red of defence. And yeah, capitalise it by running when you can. Um, and definitely in the half court, keeping it as quick as you can. Little little um, appreciation there from Tintin himself. Oh, I think it was more at you than it was at me, though. <laughs> I'll take appreciation anywhere I can, coach. As what teams back on the floor, ten minutes inside this one. Ball in the hand of the Wolves. Yuboa up top, sizes it up, gets down low, gets to the rim, gets the two points, puts the Wolves up by eight. Looking for an answer. Here's a doke. Looking inside, can't find what. Keeps it across to Metcalf. 
finds right, sides up the defence, finds Watts down low, kicks it out, it's okay for three, can't get it to go. Ball falls in the hands of Dearman, kicks it to Yeboah, kicks ahead, Ferreira. Cross court, James Turner for three, can't get it to go, Ferreira flies in out of nowhere, can't get it to go again. Ball ends up in the hands of Doke for the wall, for the Eagles even, sorry. You don't get this kind of action on it's Saturday night, do you? Planes and tanes and mains and whatever they call them. TK Watts. Watts puts it up, can't get it to go. Ferreira forces the foul off Pazorski. That's his first of the game. Manuel Yeboa just making sure the foul wasn't called on him. Yeah, no, again, good, good work off the ball by for a little tip on the ball. Um, number four just came in for Doncaster a little bit late. Um, I was able to get that little touch foul. So, 8.48 left of this contest as we welcome back Tom Grayling and Wilfred Sante for the Wolves. On paper now, the matchup should look a little bit easier on the eye. Not so much height difference or anything like that. Cross court. Sante, cross court to Boa. Oh. Can't get it into Grayling. But Yeboah keeping that pressure. The ball's with right. Kicks to Metcalf. Finds Watts. Wolves adjust. Find over. Ball gets kicked to Doke. Goes to the lane. Two points. Coach, that's something we've seen quite a lot from him in this contest. Yeah, obviously, I'm guessing he's left-handed. If he's not, he's got an exceptional left hand. But he's been driving left, finishing left hand side. And to really stop it. As Sante answers with the three of his own. For those of you on the stream, you can probably hear Coach Dean Blake in a minute shouting for his team to guard the ball. Metcalf, use the screen from Watts. Watts pops, Metcalf drives. Kicks it out, finds a doke. Okay. Six seconds, shot clock, five, four. That's keeps better. driving, keeps dribbling. Gets down low to Wiggins, puts it up, gets the points. That's just one of those scenarios. Great defence by the Wolves. Put them down right to the last second of the 24. But sometimes offence just, you know, it's a little bit too much for the defence. And in that scenario, yeah, just a little bit, little bit of pressure on the offensive side. As Yeboa answers with a three for the Wolves again. Force in this game down to the wire. Wolves lead by 10. 85 75. 7 14 left of this contest. Right kicks it out, finds Wiggins, gets it back, drives down low, throws it out to Watts, puts it up, doesn't fall this occasion. Picked up by Tom Grayling, stolen back again by Watts. Two easy points for David Watts. Balls with Grayling, finds Yeboah, attacks right, gets the separation, no foul called. Emmanuel Yeboah hits the three. Puts the Wolves up by 12. Wolves will really want to try and get a stop here. Yeah, Been back to back to back and they can't get it done. It's another score there from David Watts. He's had an absolute monster of a game tonight, coach. You know, leading the score, 37 points on the night, and he's not even stopped yet. As Wilfred Sante answers again. We've got back to back action here, coach. Yeah, three threes, back to back to back. They want to put it back inside to Tintin. Shoot a, someone, shoot a three. A turnover. Turnover forced there by David Watts. That turnover, exactly what the Wolves will be looking for as well. They've sort of bailed themselves out with the return of the threes, but definitely something just to stunt the momentum of Doncaster here. So Kieran Wright takes a seat and we welcome back Bakaya Nasser to this contest. Uh -oh. oh, look at that, causing the mismatch. Alberto Ferreira is wide open under the basket. That's a foul was called on Santo there. That's his fourth foul of this contest. Coach, that's two keen players in Wilfred Sante and Mata Bautianu sitting on four fouls. Hey, listen, you know, it's been like that the whole game. The Wolves have still stayed in front. So you really got to give credit to, you know, the, the, the second team almost coming in. 
uh, all the guys on the bench in a certain spot. I guarantee Coach Dean will just keep him in now until he fouls. And then once he fouls out, okay, I don't have to think about that anymore. Now somebody else is coming back in. Uh, it's George Dacon gets down low, gets two points underneath. Brings the score back to 11, 93-82 in favour of the Worcester Wolves. It's James Turner. Must have heard me talking about the score because he changed it, made three points, made now 96-82 in the favour of the Wolves. Five minutes left to go in this contest. Doke wide open, can't get it to go. Couldn't answer. And here comes your borough in the Wolves. There's Grayling up high, forces the foul. Coach, it's that quick thing, and again from Emmanuel Yeboa, just to make sure he's finding his open man down the floor. Yeah, just going back to the bread and butter. Obviously, we, we get the three down one, and great, great job for James Turner getting in and getting those options. And then down here, they you know managed to get the rebound, and then yeah, just hitting it early, nice and early down the floor. Miscommunication from the Doncaster side. If Wolves are able to get looks like that and are able to do that, you know, it, it's basically their game to lose if they're getting looks like that all the time. But again, these aren't just popping up out of nowhere; they're making these things happen. Still one number to go. Tom Gray can't get the first. After that foul from Josh Metcalf. Can't get the second. Picked off by Watts. Metcalf slowing it down. David Watts puts it up over Ferrara. And you can't stop a big man who can shoot, coach. No, and again, I go back to the, the point I made before. Sometimes offense is just too good. You can do everything you try to do on defense, but the offense still somehow managed to score. And in that scenario, he's just jumping up and taking the shot. But you can play, get right up on his grill, and sometimes they still make it. It is what it is, on to the next play. Nasser brought it up to say Watts wide again. Unfriendly roll, can't get it to go. Brought up by Wiggins, back in the hands of Watts. Move to Okoya, over to Metcalf. Nasser puts it up, can't get it to go. Marble Doncaster Eagles players running after it, but unfortunately can't pick it up for their team. Balls in the hands of the Wolves. Santa, pass to Grayling, over to Turner. Versus to Ferreira, finds the back door of Yeboa. Can't get it to go, kept it back, 10 seconds on the clock. Yeboa gets the screen off Ferreira, rolls hard, stop and pop, hit the three, gets it to go! That's three straight free to Manuel Yeboa, making the score 99-85 in the frame of the Wolves. 3.35 left to go as Adoke gets all the way down the lane. Capitalising on the mismatch and a little miscommunication again there from the Wolves. Yeah, they're, you know, they're hitting really good big shots, but you, you just cannot allow them to come down the floor and be so easy the other way. At least if they score a two down the other way, it's not so easy as that was. As Turner can't get it to go. Pulls in the hand of Nasser, gets it across to Adoke. Back to Nasser. Drives down low, gets against Yuboa, can't get it to go. And Wilfred Sante gets down the lane, forces the unsportsmanlike foul. That's going to put him with a line for two and possession. As David Wiggins takes a seat after picking up that foul. And we welcome back Worcester Wolves big man Matai Baltianu comes in to replace Tom Grayling. Makes them both. Takes us the first triple digit score of the season. Mr. Wolves 108. Got past the Eagles 87. As James Turner takes a seat. And we welcome back Aaron Davudi. Just under three minutes left in this contest. Your power. Your power is hit at another three. Mate. Taking his tally up. Forcing the Doncaster Eagles to try and play a bit more defence on him. Kieran Wright back in the contest, kicks it to Doke, steps out of bounds, oh, moves in the hands. 
Oh, the Western Wolves. As timeout is called by Doncaster Eagles. Western Wolves 104, Doncaster Eagles 87, 242 left in this game. Coach, talk to me about that last little possession. Anyone in basketball knows if somebody's having a really good shooting day, it's called shooting the lights out of the gym. And then actually, if you look, the only lights that are on are on the court. Those ones are supposed to be on the far court, the ones behind us. So he's definitely doing that. Hopefully, he doesn't, he doesn't actually shoot the lights out of the court. So that does have a little bit of a delay. But no, he's doing phenomenal today. He's made some really good reads of the defenders. And that's what's getting the easy look. It's not so much he's doing a million trillion dribble moves and then stepping back although we did have one of those the rest of them have been he's moved got really good positions read the defense come off screens the right way and he's got the open looks and most importantly he's knocked them down yeah great job from Manuel Yabera there he's now six of ten from three putting up 28 points of the day the coach is starting to think he's not finished yet Absolutely not. And the other, the other side I was going to say from it, if, if, if the Wolves guys think this game is over, which I don't believe they will, you know, they they go all the way to the end. They need to be real careful. You know, a couple of threes from Wright or Watts, and this game gets a lot, lot closer than it is right now. Well, we've got 2.42 left of this contest and try and try and get Doncaster to try and get an answer for them. Balls of your belt. Pissed across to Ferreira. Finds Davudi. It's Sante. He used the screen off Ferreira. Hits him down low. Get the rim. Once again, Roberto Ferreira getting down the lane. Getting two quick layup points, coach. Yeah, no, perfect. And again, you know, Ferreira is undersized in terms of the pick and roll. But his sheer athleticism and, you know, his length has allowed him to take those two steps, get up to the height, and then finish, you know, nice and outside with his right hand. Nowhere Watts could get it. So, yeah, really good finish inside there by Ferreira. As Nasser gets down low, gets two to the points so and the foul on Ferreira. Great. There's a blocking foul called there. Tom Castro goes to the line for one. Foul called against Yaboa. And gets the extra point to go. Brings the gap down to 16. Worcester Wolves 106. Doncaster East was 90. It's just over two minutes left in this contest. Balls of Yubawa. Sizing up his University of Worcester teammate. Gets past him, gets down low. Can't get it to go. Ball falls in the hands of David Watts. Kicks it to Josh Metcalf. Kicks it out to Adoke. Gets down low, stop and pop, gets it up, can't get the score. Ball falls to Sante, brings it up. Get it past right, get it back. Get all the way down low. And just a little bit too much, get down low. NASA coming down low, finds Adoke down low. Two quick, easy points there with the pass of Bakayo NASA. All of a sudden, it's a 14 point game. Just over. A minute to go. As we have the final straight of this one again. Yeboa. Go against Nasser. Finds Batiaz. Yeboa from top. Can't get it to go. Ball falls to Matai Baltianu. Kicks it out. Finds Sante. Puts the ball on the floor. Gets it to go. Wilfred Sante with ice in his veins. Keeping it going for the Worcester Wolves who lead 109-92 over the Doncaster Eagles. Yeah. NASA can't get it to recover. Ball falls to Ferreira, he brings up to Yeboah. Kicks it down to Mato Bartianu. And coach, it looks like Worcester Wolves just trying to dribble this one out. Trying to look, look a bit too much for them. Yeah, so they get, they get one shot up, make sure it hits the rim. Yeboah and finds Bartianu down low. Finds your barrel up top, can he hit another? No, he can't get it to go. Ball falls to David Watts, and that looks like that's going to be the end of this one. Worcester Wolves are going to take it 109 92, taking the high point lead. And the whistle goes to the University of Worcester Arena, making some noise. And coach, just talk to us about how exciting of a game that has just been. Oh, yeah, I mean, you, can, you can see in the score, you know, it's the first time the Wolves have been able to get over the 100 mark. 
other teams have been able to do it in the league. It's the first time they've been able to do it. It's a great time to start doing it because now you've got the second half of the season where some of the results at the beginning of the season, which they probably wanted to go and get, now with this, you know, uh, the momentum, hopefully they'll be able to go forwards and continue that. So this one ends. Emmanuel Yaboa leading the Worcester Wolves 28 points. David Watts hitting 41 for the total game and coach just talk to me about how important he's been for this Doncaster Eagles side well it, you know it's simple as this they didn't have him before Christmas now they've got him they just got to make sure that if he is doing what he needs to do that other people are doing the same thing I do think however in terms of the defensive stand, stand uh, defensive standpoint it was just too much in terms of uh, the inside presence that the Wolves had today uh, you know he picks up two or three early fouls like Matej Balton who does the game changes but the fact he was able to stay in it's a lot lot easier um, and that's why he's got his 41 I'm not saying that he was complacent on defence that's what I'm saying what I am saying is if he does get three or four fouls I do think that the, the elements of the, the, the game uh, you know being so close in the balance I think it changes and I think he knows that the experience he's got so it ends here, Worcester Wolves 109, Newca Doncaster Eagles 92. Highly contested contest and it's one that we've thoroughly enjoyed and hope you've enjoyed back home as well. Next time we are at this University of Worcester Arena, the Worcester Wolves women take on the Derby Trailblazers. That's Friday the 2nd of February with a 7.30 tip. Make sure you get all your information from the Worcester Wolves, Facebooks, Instagrams, Twitters, all of the above aforementioned. If you want to get tickets, make sure you visit ticketline.com slash Worcester Wolves or come into the box office at the University of Worcester Arena. We've been, I've been Oli Marr, this has been Kieran Howe. We're going to call it a night. I'm going to go home, get some sleep. Absolutely. What about you? Absolutely, I'm going to probably go for a little bit of a meal, treat the missus and uh, yeah, I will see you guys next Friday. Treat the missus, love it. Coach, we'll see you next Friday. And as for now, bye bye for now.